Okay, thank you. And as is my routine, Lean Frontiers, Skylar in particular, but Jim as well, thank you very much for all the background work that you do. And I'd like to introduce Pat Geary. Many of you will have met Pat before, Chief Operating Officer with Story Construction based in Iowa. Uh, so just as a point of starting, a couple of things. In, uh, I just want to invite people to pose questions along the way and uh, we'll we do our best to answer them as we go. I'm just going to share my screen as a means of a level set. I want to uh, just make sure we're all good with the core of our topic, which is job relations. And on the left-hand side, and interestingly enough, I had a conversation about this uh, with someone the other about a week ago. In, on the left-hand side, we have the front of the job relations card being the foundations for good relations. And on the right-hand side, we have the back of the job relations card being the four-step routine for handling a problem. Front on the left uh, and the front because that's the proactive side. And that's uh, gonna be our focus of this discussion today. The right-hand side being the back of the card is the reactive side for want of a better description. And I always refer to it as a PDCA for humans looking at it quite simply. And the human element of it is the talk with individual concerned and get opinions and feelings. And the in step two, when we consider the objective and effect on the individual, the group, and then production. So there's a human element to PDCA, but enough of that. It's not about job relations. It's about Pat and Story and their practicing of job relations. So Pat, uh, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. So in our, thank you. in our description on the website, Lean Frontiers website, it says practicing the principles of work standards has increased the pull for effective leadership behaviours such as letting each worker know how, he, how they are doing. So tell us a little bit more about that, please, and with that pull, and, get, and if you could give us an example. Yeah, so <clears throat> what work standards has done for us is it's, um, our approach has been to uh, pose a, a question or pose a desire to create a work standard and, and then get a variety of different people to uh, create that. And so management has said, hey, th this is important, uh, have our folks figure it out. And <clears throat> what that's done for us is it's, is it's created um, better uh, um, uh, buy into what those standards are. It's not management dictating to folks. It's, hey, we figured it out ourselves. We're more committed to it. And what that's kind of translated into is people have been more willing to kind of, one, appreciate, do we know what the standard is? And if we don't, um, you know, let's let's try to understand that. It's also allowed people, or it seems to have made people more willing to try to adhere to that. And so, that that's kind of got twofold. One, the supervisors have got people that are um, trying to do it better and are, will receive feedback better about are we meeting the standard or not, and and if not, why not? And it and the thing that we were trying to do and and it's kind of the other side of the job relations card is get the facts. We're getting better with getting the facts, and I believe getting the facts is applicable to even the foundations. Um, to tell somebody how he or she is doing is important, but if you don't really know the facts of that, it's tough to be legitimate and um, uh, real or genuine in what you're speaking to them with. And so uh, the, the standards are just getting us to be uh, more comfortable with, this is what we're trying to accomplish, and we either, either we are or we aren't, red poster or green poster, and it's okay, we are wherever we are, and if we're in red poster, how do we simply try to get closer to green poster? And again, it's less, and Oscar and I talked about this a few days ago, we're trying to take adjectives out of getting the facts. It's not good or bad, it just is. And um, now what we do may have some adjectives about how we might be, what we might do, but but let's just figure out what's going on and, um, and then take some steps. And so, um, it's just been, been easier to have those conversations um, as opposed to my opinion. Um, and we can disagree on opinion and it's not to say we don't have some opinions yet. It's just lesser of that. And it's more about kind of just what is. Yeah, good. I'm just going to go back to sharing my screen because <clears throat> what I understand through that is that the work standards work 
through that conversation, you just through what you just said then, is that the work standards work has really helped you with figure out what you expect of the person. So, but what I heard you say is they're sort of figuring out what's expected of themselves of them. Is that right? Yeah, they're we're doing yeah, it we're themselves. giving yeah we're giving them the chance to come up with the standards and as opposed and they've got better ideas than we do anyway, quite frankly. So. Um, they're closer to the work. And um, because of that, people are more willing to be um, or, or, or looking um, more um, uh, favorably upon what are the standards that we have. And if we don't have yeah. them, let's figure it out. And if we have them, it it's comforting. Um, not, now there's some direction, there's some expectation. Um, and it's comforting to talk about it as a supervisor because it's not me making it up, but it's also more comforting as an individual um, about am I meeting it or not. And the other thing we, we talk about a lot is our, our standards are 80% right. And we have no idea what 20% needs to be made better. And it's only by using them do we ultimately have people come to us and say, hey, this should, we could change this or do that. Um, but we're not uh, so presumptuous to say that just because we have a standard, it's it's forever and always. It's the best we have at the time, knowing that it need that it, ver it needs to be better and can be better. And and the the users are the ones that are going to make the most significant impacts to making that stuff be better through time. Yeah, it's interesting. I um I uh, the couple of things I've picked up on there, and my experience has always been that humans are more comfortable when the expectations are clear, even if they don't like them. Yeah. If, if you would, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I'll I'll agree. Um, the um, it, pro provided you can explain why, why yes. is it? Why are we doing what we're doing? Um, and in an, in a um, respectful, uh, collaborative way, as opposed to we're just going to do it because I said. You know, but your kids don't like it. We don't like it. Um, and so if you can't explain why, then you ought to rethink, you know, what we're doing. Just because we've always done it that way probably isn't the best reason. And sure. um, and so, you know, being challenged on it, I think, is a good thing. It forces you to, to reevaluate, is it is this right for this situation? And if it's not, let's let's figure out what is and and, and go from there. The facts have just changed. OK, that's then. So maybe the, the standard needs to change. Yeah, exactly. So Dirk <clears throat> Van Russum has just asked which standards are we talking about here, the person work standard or even the output also? Well, Dirk, I'll answer that. They're following the same routine as you guys and they start with the output and they work their way through the uh, routine to the person work standard. But the output work standard, you know, it, it, that's probably had the most, well, in my experience, that, has, that brings about the most debate. First, we've got to agree on what good looks like for what we're doing here. Have you how, and that's that's a very positive thing from a job relations point of view. If the people who do the work have that debate, has that been your? It's a loaded question, Pat, but has that been your experience? Yeah, <clears throat> to the point where the we have an owner of every work standard, kind of the the responsible party, and they lay out what they would like to accomplish with this work standard, and then they leave the room, and then the the debate happens. We've got some facilitators that facilitate people through the process and they do an extra job of staying out of the conversation, but just keeping the process moving forward. But they, yeah, they foster, they support the debate and, um, you know, people just do a good job of kind of putting it out there and listening to one another. I mean, this, um, no one's taking this so seriously that it's, you know, we're going to get into fist fights or anything, but, but they have good discussions and, and we have, um, with we've made some, maybe some slight modifications to what they come back with, but quite frankly, what they come back with is really good. And if it's if it disagree a little bit, okay, let's try it and see what happens. And if it works, sure. fantastic. And if it doesn't, maybe we need to adjust. And so, yeah. um, quite frankly, it's been for, selfishly for me, um, it's been great because in the past I've had to come up or others in in some more senior positions have had to come up with this and and now we're getting better stuff and Ma management's and, made the management's done the defining yeah yeah and then the yeah. ownership's with who uh oh, management funny that right 
Yep. But if they, yep. if the people involved do the work, then um, they're, they're, the ownership's there, which, which what, the way I take that is they're, um, they're figuring out, they're almost doing this foundation of their own accord, the top left one, as opposed to management imposing it on them, which is yeah. by far yeah. and away the greatest, gives you the, by far and away the greatest chance of success. Yep, I agree. Yep. Yeah. So moving on, and you've sort of touched on this, I think we've got um, another point that you've found is aligned with that same foundation of let each worker uh, know how, how they're doing. Story has increased their candor, candor with their, sorry about that word, it's not a word that's common in this country, the candor with their folks and move more quickly to, aim, to actions to improve performance. So can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so... Um... So I think to begin with, candor is um, is a function of the relationship you have with folks. Um, you can just be more candid with people that you're uh, where your relationship is strong. And so I think it starts from a: Do you have? Are you building teams? And are you are you treating people with respect? And you're acting with humility. Are you are you approaching the situation in that manner? And if and if you do, relationships get stronger. And then when the relationship gets stronger, I think it's just easier to, to kind of just say say what it is. It kind of goes back to the facts is this is less about my opinion and just simply about this is how I observe what's going on. Let's have a conversation about it. And um, and that's um, the taking the time to get the facts has been the the uh, has been difficult. We, we want to take actions and and getting the facts is that that just gets in the way and takes too, and takes too long. Well, what we found is when we when we take that time and pause the the decisions we make or the the assessments we make are much better the conversations we can then have with people are um less about opinion and more about just 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 fact and um when i'm not imposing i think you did bad here and said this just didn't this this didn't turn out like we expected why not <clears throat> and try to understand first people are okay with that they 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 want they want good outcomes too and so um, helping to understand why we didn't get it and then helping to talk about how we might get it to what we need to in an open way, most, most folks are fine with. Um, uh, it's when you don't, when you're in a red poster, now you're, you're arguing about what the standard was. Now people don't want to hear it because they were working to a different place than you were expecting them to. And that's, and then that's your fault, not, not theirs. And uh, so we need to get our house in order first, because then we can actually have decent conversations. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. When the yeah, it's very, very hard to have uh, robust, uh, straight, strong, straight, strong, and correct relationships when the expectations are on different pages. When there's yep. not a common view of expectations. I think that's what I was getting at earlier on when I said my experience is that humans will be will be better when they when they have expectations that they don't like rather if they understand the why, as opposed to having none at all. The, mm -hmm. the other thing, one thing I wanted to pick up on, and I'm, I know I'm still struggling a little bit with this. You and I have emailed backwards and forwards a couple of times is the dropping of the adjectives. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Please. It might help me understand it too. Yeah. So, um, not the dropping of, but the, the, the oh, it's, uh, it's... awareness of be careful of them. Yeah, so we like to label things good or bad. Um, it's just in our nature, and and whether we find comfort in that or, or whatnot, I'm not sure. But particularly when we label it bad, <clears throat> uh, now we have to overcome the emotional response to to that. The situation is what it is, and your the, your emotional response, not the domain or the or or the or the, or the or the individuals. Or the or the other whoever it could be one individual could be an entire team something didn't go like we like we wanted it to go oh okay and so um provided that people were were acting um uh in good faith and trying to do their best um it just it didn't turn out the way we wanted to and so what do we learn from that and how do we take a better action next time and if we have to overcome emotional response, a particular negative emotional response, I don't think that's helpful to get to a better outcome. Because um, ultimately, that's what we're trying to get to is what's the next next iteration, the next step or the next 
time we try it and can it be a better outcome? And so let's just simply, you know, talk about what happened in an antiseptic way. And yeah. now you're not putting somebody, you're not putting someone in a corner. Um, uh, it's just, again, it's just the facts, you know, um, you read a newspaper and you have an article that's, you know, this is how the game played. And then you have the editorial that says, this is what I think about it. I just want, how did the game go? I don't need the editorial stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's just, again, some people will agree with it and some people won't. Um, we have plenty of plenty of discord in this country right now. And I don't think that's helpful when you're trying to resolve situations. What are the facts? How do we, how do we figure it out and how do we take steps? A couple of things I really like what you said. The one is uh, the antiseptic description that makes now that <laughs> sort of may, makes sense to me. But also that analogy you just gave then of we just want to know the way the game was played, not the editorial. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, Pat, and this is a, um, a question that interests me. Uh, from what I know of you, that's a fair transition for you as a manager, because if you were, if you probably look back to what I understand from, you know, six or eight years ago, you were the guy who was setting the direction, if you like. Now you've had to do 180. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about that? How hard was that? And what, what did, I mean, I imagine there's a lot of people out there, particularly senior people who might be in a similar boat. What did you, how have you found that change and how'd you go about um, it? Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's awesome and it's frightening. Um, it, um, and so you gotta, uh, so meeting you helped, um, quite frankly, you, offer some perspective and some uh, some challenge to some thinking. The the my confidence comes from my belief in the in the routines. The work standards routine, JR, uh, the improvement routine. I, I just believe they're really solid, simple routines that apply to lots and lots of different kinds of situations. Six and eight years ago, um, we were attacking it from a, that, that all of this stuff was unique. And, and that was just, I think, wrong thinking. And as we have transitioned to have in relying on the routines, um, we said it's easier to teach the routines and then, and then back out and watch to see uh, how, if a person does the routine correctly and then the outcomes and we're getting better outcomes. Um, you know, things are as unpredictable as they've always been, but we can, assess and and help those situations more um quickly and more effectively because we're using again i think we just have some solid routines you know you know kata or the or the j programs and um i think just people are making better uh are, are just doing better and so when that happens it's easy it's easier to back out and it's it's liberating to let more, it gives you more confidence to let people go further and, and do yeah, more right. things. And then once they do it, my God, look how far they went to get out of the way some more. And so it become, it became kind of a flywheel thing that um, it's, it's, it's been great to watch. Um, and we've got more going on at the company right now than we ever have because it's distributed across, you know, 40 or 50 different people as opposed to four. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The four, four of us being, still, you, you being you being one of them, the four yeah. at the top, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And and quite frankly, it's better stuff. Um, yes. And so so that's even better. Um, so so what I understand you to be saying there is the word the the reliance six or eight years ago was on the word of the four. The reliance is now coming on make the four, if you like, making sure these routines are being practiced. These solid mm -hmm. returns are being practiced, and if that's happening, then there's good, there's faith in the the results will come. If you like, correct. Yep, and and they, yeah. uh, because they are coming, and it increases the faith that we they will continue to come. Yeah, yeah. Once you see the lot, once that faith is rewarded initially, then it's easier, for, obviously, for you for, and you being one of them to pick up that to have faith in the faith, if you like. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rebecca Jenkins has asked, I've, she said she's written, I've seen some presentations where emotional responses from employees or situations where emotional responses from employees can be part of gathering the facts. 
Um, are there any situations of story where acknowledging unexpected emotional reactions is taken into account? Oh, oh sure. Um, <clears throat> the um, there are certain situations where being antiseptic makes sense. Um, there's there are lots of situations where the um, you know people take what they're doing seriously. It affects them personally. There's other things going on in their lives, and so emotion is absolutely going to going to um, present itself. How we then uh, respond to that and describe that becomes important. Do we do we um, feel that fire that's burning, or do we respond in a way that that first seeks to understand it, but but doesn't. Um, necessarily uh, fuel exacerbated it, fuel if it's if it's a negative kinds of thing, um, yes. because it needs to be, you know, certainly one of the steps of getting the facts is getting a person's opinions and feelings, and that that necessarily has emotion to it, and so, um, but it's, it doesn't. It's not good or bad emotion. It's they have. It, it, they, this is the emotions they're having. Let's appreciate them, and then. Uh, way and decide what might be the right kinds of things based on whatever that situation is. Sure. Now, it makes good sense. Now, um, Dirk Van Rossum was also asked, not in this webinar pre prior to, how do you ensure, how have you ensured the ongoing, ongoing practice took root in particular for the foundations of good relations? What have you been able to do to get people to, or what some of the things you've done to get people to focus on the foundations for good relations? So um, we've had uh, 40 people go through JR. We've got another 10 going through here. Asha's coming to see us here next week. Um, and um, each of the classes that have gone, we've um, had them just get together for a short time once a week to talk about, talk about how they're using uh, whether it's the foundations or the or the routine, is a way to keep it alive. The the thing I'm excited about for for next week is we're going to get to together um, a subset of that group of people, uh, really who supervisors of supervisors, and we're going to go through a how do the, how do they coach the JR um, the foundations and the routine, and so they may have a, a supervisor that that reports to them that's that's needing support in how they're dealing with one of their subordinates. And we're going to, we're going to have uh, them equip them with some skills to be able to coach that uh, there's uh, their direct report and how they're using the routine. And so we're going to try to create some multi-level skill sets to be able to have coaches and learners in the routine and it, as opposed to, you know, users and um and recipients of, I guess. And so um, I'm excited to see it. Uh, we've also just got several people who uh, get out and about and see lots of people. They're coaches we've got uh, with some of the other things we do and they're big advocates for it. And so they're they're um, good with just keeping it fresh, talking about it, um, you know, using the language. And, um, you know, most, I have not heard anybody that said, oh, this doesn't, this is foolish. This doesn't work. I mean, they've all, they've gone through the, the session. Oh, that, this makes sense. It's, and then it's not, you know, the foundations are straightforward. The, the routine is not complicated. It just takes some discipline, but it's not 87 steps with 47 different variants and this and that. It's fairly disciplined and or fairly uh, simple. And it's similar to the improvement routine and it's in it. Um, and, and so we use a lot of improvement routine. Well, it's, it, it uh, these patterns are this, generally the same. There's some variance to them. And so again, keeping it simple and keeping it the same across lots of things has just been, has reinforced it to be able to be used with more frequency. Yeah, good, thanks. Um, now we're getting towards the end of our time. What I would like you just to finish on please is the career storyboard um, that yeah. you guys have started on. Uh, and the reason for that is I know you're going to be speaking more about that at Cardicon 11 slash the summit 2025. But if you can just, because it fits fair and square with a couple of the foundations. So can you just tell us briefly what you're doing with what you guys call the career storyboard? Yeah. So we took the, the Cata routine and, and created a, a fillable PDF 
um, and use it for career development. So the challenge is we ask people, where do they want to be three years in their career, three years from now? Current condition, where are you at? The target condition is uh, we have um, reviews we do every four months. And so in four months, what progress do you want to have made on your path to get to three years from now? And then what are the obstacles that are in your way to get there? And what, what actions do we need to take? And, and so we have, uh, that's the second step. We have a kind of a career, a career guide conversation document that we start with for, is some feeder material, but then the employee will fill this out and, and this will be part of the review process we do with our, with our employees. The, and that's been an effective thing. We've got about 95% of our folks with, uh, with one. The, the thing that I guess I'm most excited about right now is in the last 12 months, we've experimented with how do we make this part of the daily conversation? Because for a while, and I'm sure folks are similar, you have a goal and it's great in a review and then you stuff it in a drawer and you don't talk about it for 90 days and you bring it back up and, oh man, we should have done something with that. Well, we were guilty as charged, absolutely. Well, what we've done now is, is we're experimenting with putting those target conditions and those actions up in a public place. We have a, a planning system we have on our trailers, uh, on our sites in a big trailer where we make assignments and, and figure out what we're going to do. And we just simply put those target conditions and those goals or those actions up in that trailer. So they're for available. For the person's development. For the person's development. The target conditions and actions for the person's Everybody development. Say that again. So the target conditions and the actions for the person's development. Yes, are, yes. are in public view. And now the whole team knows what they are. And as we're thinking about what we're going to do each and every day, that's available for people to see. And that can now get those target conditions or those actions particularly can get woven into the assignments that we make. <laughs> so if somebody, uh, wants to be a, somebody wants to be a welder, uh, get, get some experience with that, that crew knows that, hey, anytime we have some miscellaneous welding, Joey should go do that. And so the crew just simply sends Joey to do it. It doesn't rely on the supervisor to always make the connections. And so uh, they just simply become part of the routine conversation about, about the work that we do, as opposed to some special thing kind of held off to the outside. And so we're experimenting with, we've, we've had some good success on our sites with the craft. We're experimenting with how we do it with some of our administrative folks. But I really think um, career growth needs to be part of our daily work. And the storyboard is the tool by which we can lay out our plan for it. And then how then do we weave that back into make sure it's part of the daily work and the daily conversations we have. And I think the combination of those two will, will accelerate the pace of the growth of our folks tremendously. So. So we'll finish by just reflecting that back to the foundation. So what I love about that is the is this this one at the bottom, make best use of each person's ability. I find probably that's the one done least well, and now I'm guilty of that as well. Uh, but what I really like about what you've said there is you're really pulling that one out and make, and making sure you do that and making it completely vi visual. So people are accountable daily, if you like, rather than, as you said, once every three months or once a year, which simply doesn't work. Right. So I love yep. it. Well done. Yep. So that's bottom of the hour, very close to the bottom of the hour. Pat, thanks again. I enjoy these conversations very much and the, the development of story. And I'm sure people who are watching, listening do. If you want to hear more from Pat and speak to him directly, then your opportunity will be at CarterCon 11, TWI Summit which is in early April next year. So, Pat, thank you, and I'll see you on Monday. Sounds good. Safe travels. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you. And thanks thank again, Skylar and Jim. Thank you, everybody. And also, just a quick reminder, you will receive a link to the recording within 24 to 48 hours. We will see you all later.